Hello. Welcome to Drawing Out the Dreaming. My name is Fiona Owen and this channel is where I want to share with you my deep love of plants and my lifelong passion for painting them. I've been a professional painter for over 40 years now and have lived in one of the five steep-sided valleys of Stroud for 34 years with my husband John, who's also an artist. We met and married at college and have brought up our two children here. They're both now artists too. Our daughter lives in Cornwall and our son in London. We've created a steep hillside garden together over all these years and it's a constant source of inspiration for my painting. We love living in the Stroud Valleys. It's a very special place. Our home is perched high on a hillside. We live in an old chapel and every year we have a studio exhibition which always means a grand annual tidy up. Until recently we opened our garden for over 30 years with a national garden scheme. It's a challenging acre of south facing terraced cliffside. The soil is marl, very thin and free draining so I grow plants that are happy with those conditions as we can't get a vehicle anywhere near us and we're not able to import manure or any heavy items. Instead I make my own compost and I feed everything with a homemade comfrey juice. I grow lots of herbs and insect friendly plants for the bees and butterflies and all the other pollinators. It's certainly not a tidy garden. I used to plan colour schemes for my borders but because things have such a habit of self-seeding, I just tend to let them be and have nice surprises. The balance between spending time tending my garden daily, alongside the hours of intensely focused painting, is really important for my well-being and for my inspiration. It keeps my painting connected with nature. I sketch the plants that I grow in my garden in watercolour, outdoors whenever possible. And then I go on to paint them in oils on gessoed panels, which is a suspension of finely ground plaster on board. I gild them with Italian gold leaf in the tradition of the medieval manuscripts that I've always loved. I studied them as a student over 43 years ago. Each painting takes several weeks to complete so I don't get many finished in a year. But I can't wait to get up to the studio every morning. It still excites me every single day. I think perhaps I was a monk if there's such a thing as a previous life. I love listening to plain song while I'm painting. I find it so soothing and it helps me concentrate. I draw out the panels carefully and gild them first, painting afterwards because I find if I do it the other way round, very often the gold will stick to the paint, which is very frustrating. What fascinates me most about medieval manuscripts is not the main subject matter, but the exquisite natural history details of the borders that the monks spent so many hours lovingly labouring over. I love the connection that they too tended their gardens, growing the plants to study and to paint, and to make medicines with. I also love the way the background landscapes draw you in, take you into another world, the precious blue ground lapis lazuli in the distance. I feel I want to walk through those landscapes. For so many years now, I've dreamed about plants. I try to depict those dreams in my paintings, which is why I've called this channel Drawing Out the Dreaming. I do believe in the genius loci, that unique spirit of every place. I try to capture this in my paintings. I weave the images with gilded sacred geometry and magical symbolism. It's with the intention of creating an invocation for healing through the image of the plant in its own landscape, so that it awakens the ancient green magic of our land. The moon often features in my paintings. It has a huge influence on me. I love old maps 
and I often use gilded mapping lines to connect points of the landscape in my paintings, which to me symbolise the interconnectedness of the land with all living things. Over the past seven years, I've been studying a herbal apprenticeship at the School of Intuitive Herbalism in one of the Stroud Valleys. It's not because I want to become a medical herbalist, but because I wanted to deepen my relationship with plants and share this with others through my paintings. I've learned to make vibrational sun and moon essences and now have a small apothecary which I use to help family and friends. Over the past few years, I've been collaborating with the school's director, Nathaniel Hughes, on a long-term project that we've called Weeds in the Heart. We've now had two books published. The first is a small primer called Intuitive Herbalism, and that explains the ways in which we can connect with plants for our mutual benefit. And then the first volume of a bigger herbal called Weeds in the Heart, and that studies individual plants in greater depth. At the moment we're working on a set of plant meditation cards. There'll be 33 in total. And these can be used either for daily meditation or to offer daily guidance or help with larger life decisions with the plant's help. The final volume will be Dreaming and Journeying with Plants and it's really exciting to have this to look forward to. Nathaniel has drawn on his years of experience as a medical herbalist and a teacher to write the book and I've drawn on my years of experience growing and painting plants to illuminate it. The meditation cards will probably take about another 18 months to complete so we hope to release them in about two years. This first video is really an introduction to the garden and to my painting but I hope to go on to show you how I make lotions and potions and flower essences and how the garden develops through the seasons. Gardening and my daily painting practice has certainly sustained me through this past year and the solitude that lockdown has imposed has drawn me deeper into the dreaming. Quiet days tending my garden plot and painting what I grow has offered plenty of space for quiet contemplation. Entry to Old Chapel Acre is through the garden gate and up some steep rickety steps which are high above the valley below. A lot of the plants in my borders have seeded themselves, especially the wild Welsh poppies that I love and remind me of home, where I lived for the first 18 years. I'm passionate about peonies and add a few more each year. I buy most of them from Kelways in Somerset. Our sunroom is filled with pelargoniums. They flower all year and they bring so much bright cheer in winter. I use this room to sketch in when it's wet or windy or too cold to be in the garden. And I do a lot of my herb studies there. Our Winnie dog usually keeps me company. John's done most of the building work in the garden. He made our little waterfall and he built our cairn from broken old Cotswold roof tiles. We inherited this shrubby St John's wort with a chapel 34 years ago. It's spread quite a lot now, but it flowers for my birthday in midsummer. We love the sound of the running waterfall when we sit next to it under the old vine pergola on summer evenings. Hopefully the water irises will be in flower for next month's video. There are numerous cliffside springs throughout our village. Only one is tested regularly and deemed suitable for drinking from. Running water brings a playful energy to the garden. I love listening to it at night, when the sound of the water seems magnified by the darkness. This fire pit was my 60th birthday present, and we often cook on it in summer evenings. The pergola is a welcome haven of cool shade on hot summer days. 
The garden reaches its zenith around midsummer solstice, mainly because that's when we used to open it for the National Garden Scheme. But now I'm planting more things that'll flower later in the summer, and certainly more things that flower in spring. The Wiltshire sundial maker Harriet James made our moon dial to my design. It honours the Welsh gods and goddesses of my heritage. It also marks the planets and the 13 moons of the year. Most gardens seem favoured by a particular plant that will seed itself happily everywhere and for us it's sweet rocket. My grandmother left me a small legacy when she died and to commemorate her we designed this table and chairs and they were made at Stowe on the Wold. I also planted seven silver birches to remember her by. The box hedges in my herb garden do a good job of protecting all the plants from the worst of the weather. They also keep the badgers out. I'm planning to grow dahlias for the first time this year. They're still in the greenhouse at the moment, but they'll go into the herb garden. I feel it could do with some more cheery summer colour. Our chapel was built on the usual east-west axis, so we can watch the weather from dawn till dusk. And the herons' daily journeys through the valley. Our pond is on the next terrace, which is 30 foot up a high cliff. We were given 12 newts by a friend when we first made the pond, and they've thrived and multiplied but they do seem to eat the frog spawn, so we have fewer frogs now. The top terrace is another ten foot higher than the pond and is home to the silver birch trees that we planted to commemorate my grandmother. John built the play tower for our children when they were young. He made it on the base of an old goat shed that we'd inherited. It had become pretty dilapidated over the years, so last summer he spent some time renovating it and now we use it for an evening drink. We planted the birch trees in 2001 and over the years as they've grown it's changed the nature of the top garden and it's now become far more shaded and I'm planting more woodland plants. Sweet woodruff, cow parsley and red and white campion. I'm planning to post a video every month in which I'll share with you what's coming up in the garden, what I'm drawing and painting, how work towards our next exhibition is coming on, and everything plant related, including how I make potions and lotions, tinctures, macerated oils, and flower essences. I'll see you in June, the season of the roses and the month of the rose moon. Meanwhile, I wish you sweet dreaming, and may the plants be with you.